Hey guys, Miss Adair here. With my fifth grade class, I had been reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and we had left off on chapter 21. We had read all the way through chapter 21, getting ready to start on chapter 22. And at the end of the chapter, we had just read that Violet was turned into a blueberry. And many of you have watched the movie, both the original and the um, newer version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. If you have, um, reading the book can still be very interesting because some things are a little different or a little bit more um, quirky in the book and it kind of makes you laugh. So even though I have watched both movies multiple times, this read aloud was very interesting for me even as I read it to my students and we really enjoyed it. Um, so if you are one of my fifth graders or anyone else at school, what we like to do whenever we read this book, everyone would get in the floor, we would get a nice pillow or something like that. Um, I know you guys are at home and it's going to be kind of hard to see some of the little pictures because this isn't um, a picture book. It just has a few pictures within the words, but um, just really get comfortable and listen and um, I hope you enjoy. And, and I have with me my um, bookmark that Talia made for me, so shout out to Talia. Thank you very much. I'm still using this in the book. So chapter 22, Along the Corridor. Well, 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 sighed Mr. Willy Wonka. Two naughty little children gone. Three good little children. We better get out of this room quickly before we lose anyone else. But Mr. Wonka, said Charlie Bucket anxiously, will Violet Beauregard ever be all right again? Or will she always be a blueberry? They'll dejuice her in no time flat, declared Mr. Wonka. They'll roll her into the dejuicing machine, and she'll come out just as thin as a whistle. But will she be all blue? asked Charlie. She'll be purple, cried Mr. Wonka, a fine rich purple from head to toe. For there you are. That's what comes from chewing disgusting gum all day long. If you think gum is so disgusting, said Mike TV, then why do you make it in your own factory? I do wish you wouldn't mumble, said Mr. Wonka. I can't hear a word you're saying. Come on, off we go. Hurry up, follow me. We're going into the corridors. And saying, and so saying, Mr. Wonka shuttled across the room to the far end of the inventing room and went through a small secret door hidden behind a lot of pipes and stoves. The three remaining children, Veruca Salt, Mike TV, and Charlie Bucket, Together, the five remaining grown-ups followed after him. Charlie Bucket saw that they were now back in one of those long pink corridors with many pink corridors leading out of it. Mr. Wonka was rushing along in the front, turning left and right and right and left, and Grandpa Joe kept saying, Keep up! Keep a hold of my hand, Charlie! It would be terrible to get lost in here. Mr. Wonka was saying, No time for any more messing around. We'll never get anywhere at that rate. And on he rushed, down the endless pink corridors with his black top hat perched on the top of his head and his plum-colored velvet coat tails flying out behind him like a flag in the wind. They passed the door on the wall. No time to go in, shouted Mr. Wonka. Press on, press on. They passed another door, and then another, and another. There were doors every twenty paces or so along the corridor now, and they all had something written on them and strange clanking noises were coming from behind several of them, and delicious smells wafting through the keyholes, and sometimes little jets of colored steam shot out from the cracks underneath. Grandpa Joe and Charlie were half running and half walking to keep up. But they were still able to read what it said on quite a few of the doors, and they hurried by. Eatable marshmallow pillows, it said on one. Marshmallow pillows are terrific, shouted Mr. Wonka as he dashed by. There'll be a rage when I get them into shops. No time to go in, though. No time to go in. Lickable wallpaper for nurseries, it said on the next door. Lovely stuff, lickable wallpaper, cried Mr. Wonka, rushing past. It has pictures of fruits on it, bananas, apples, oranges, grapes, pineapples, strawberries, and snoozeberries. Snoozeberries, said Mike TV. Don't interrupt said Mr. Wonka. The wallpaper has pictures of all these fruits printed on it, and when you lick the picture of the banana, 
it tastes of banana. When you lick a strawberry, it tastes of strawberry. When you lick a snoozeberry, it tastes exactly like a snoozeberry. But what does a snoozeberry taste like? You're mumbling again, said Mr. Wonka. Speak louder next time. On, on we go. Hurry up. Hot ice creams for cold days, it said on the next door. Extremely useful in the winter, said Mr. Wonka, rushing on. Hot ice cream warms you up, no end in freezing weather. I also make hot ice cubes for putting in hot drinks. Hot ice cubes make hot drinks hotter. Cows that give chocolate milk, it said on the next door. Ah, my pretty little cows, cried Mr. Wonka. How I love those cows. But why can't we see them? asked Veruca Salt. Why do you have to go rushing on past all these lovely rooms? We shall sock in time, cried out Mr. Wonka. But don't be so madly impatient. Fizzy lifting drinks, it said on the next door. Oh, those are fabulous, cried Mr. Wonka. They fill you with bubbles, and the bubbles are full of a special kind of gas. And this gas is so terrifically lifting that it lifts, that it lifts you right off the ground, just like a balloon. And up you go until your head hits the ceiling, and there you stay. But how do you come down again? asked little Charlie. You do a burp, of course said Mr. Wonka. You do a great, loud, long, rude burp, and up comes the gas, and down comes you. But don't drink in outdoors. There's no knowing of how high you'd be carried up if you do that. I gave some to an old and Loompa once out in the backyard, and he went up and up and up and disappeared out of sight. It was very sad. I never saw him again. He should have burped, Charlie said. Of course he should have burped said Mr. Wonka. I stood there shouting, Burp! You silly burp! Or you'll never come down again. But he didn't, or couldn't, or wouldn't. I don't know which. Maybe he was too polite. He may be on the moon by now. On the next door it said, Square sweets that look round. Wait! cried Mr. Wonka, skidding suddenly to a halt. I am very proud of my sweets that look round. Let's take a peek. And that was all of chapter 22. And if you want to listen to the next chapter, please tune in for the next video. Thank you.